Hello. Uh, so often when I think of sieges, it seems that what determines the winning outcome is the, the show of force. Uh, did the attackers have rocks that were smashier than the defender's walls? Who had the pointier sticks? How many pointy sticks were there? Woo, there goes my straw. Um, hooray, and I have laid siege upon the front row. Uh, so as I was saying, it seems often uh, winning is, is the strength of the attack or the strength of the defense. However, if you're under attack and you don't have the resources for a show of force, then you need a defense of deception. So tonight I'll walk you through the empty fort strategy, which is one way to baffle the enemy using reverse psychology and deviousness. So the empty fort strategy is one of a, of a number of strategies known as the 36 stratagems, which come from a roughly 2,000-year-old Chinese essay comprising of 36 distinct battle scenarios and recommendations to be used in war, politics, or civil discourse, uh, predominantly from the Warring States period and the Three Kingdoms period, which, to give you a rough estimate, go back 2,000 years and then wiggle 300 years in either direction, then you have both periods. So, the 36 stratagems have been attributed to uh, two significant military strategists, uh, with good reason. Uh, they have been attributed to Sun Tzu, who wrote The Art of War, who was a noted philosopher and tactician, and most accomplished strategist of his time. So it makes sense that these amazing military strategies would be written by him. But also some people ascribe it to Zhuge Liang, who's also a noted philosopher and tactician and the most accomplished strategist of his time. Don't confuse the two. Uh, so, however, since these strategies uh, distinctly refer to many different battle scenarios from both of their time periods, it's more likely that it, that it was rooted in oral tradition and eventually was written down by someone, but probably not either one. These marvelous 36 strategies are organized into six chapters, uh, each containing six strategies. The first half are advantageous strategies, uh, when, when the, the ball is in your court, when things are favorable for you. And the latter half are for disadvantageous strategies. And of course, it being Odd Salon, I'm going to talk about the desperate <laughs> strategies. Which leads me to number 32, the empty fort strategy, also known as the strategy of open city gates, the scheme with the empty castle, or even when weak, be casual, or never show your true strength. It reads like this. When the enemy is superior in numbers and your situation is such that you expect to be overrun at any moment, then drop all pretense of military preparedness and act casually. Unless the enemy has an accurate description of your situation, this unusual behavior will arouse suspicions. With luck, he will be dissuaded from attacking. Okay, you got that? So the elements are be unexpected, act casual when it's expected that you're running, the expectation would be that you're running around marshaling military forces, but instead, you know, whistle like I heard someone in the front row do. Now, the most famous example of the empty fort strategy at work comes from The Romance of the Three Kingdoms by Lua Guanzhong, which is one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. It is also stupendously comprehensive uh, Hist uh, a stupendously comprehensive history of the Three Kingdoms period, which was from about 169 AD to 280 AD. So Guangzhong, almost 1,200 years later, wrote the best known history, which is actually a novel, so it's historical fiction, describing the time of Zhuge Liang. Uh, however, it, it does, the, the, many of the events are real, many of the characters are real, but there's some literary embellishment, but it's the best history we have of the period. So enter our players. One of the legends from the novel is when learned scholar, inventor, noted philosopher and tactician, and most accomplished strategist of his time, and regent of the Shu state of China, Zhuge Liang was pitted against General Sima Yi of the state of Wei. You guys are great. So the story goes that Sima Yi decided to take 
Chichang, a Shu stronghold that controlled access to three major roads, as well as storing and supplying provisions for the army of the state of Shu. Now, Sima Yi came prepared with 150,000 troops to take the small fortification. To give you a sense of scale, that is the population of the city of Hayward. <laughs> At this time, Zhu Geliang happened to be within the fortification on a supply run. He only had 2,000 soldiers. That's about 1.5% of the amount of dudes that Sima Yi had. This did not look good. Desperately outflanked, Zhuge quickly hatched a plan. With news that Sima's troops were bearing down, Zhuge staged the scene. He ordered his troops to take down any military banners or flags and to hide within and not be seen and not come out. The this, this stage was set. As Sima Yi's scouts approached, approached Chi Chang, they were astonished to find the gates open. Stranger still, no defense was implemented and even weirder, noted philosopher and tactician and most accomplished strategist of his time, Zhuge Liang, was seated atop the city gates, calmly playing his lute. <laughs> the scouts reported this back to an incredulous Sima Yi. He did not believe it and ordered his troops to advance upon the city. To his surprise, the scene was exactly as the scouts had described it. The gates were open, the fortification seemingly desolate, save for a couple of men nonchalantly sweeping in the empty streets, and noted philosopher and tactician and most accomplished strategist of his time, Zhuge Liang, atop the city gates, playing his lute, the music eerily echoing through the empty fort and to Sima Yi. <laughs> Appearing completely unfazed by 150,000 troops, Zhuge Liang was smiling to himself whilst he played. A single stick of incense alight, flanked by a couple of boys, one holding a yak's tail fan, which is a traditional symbol of authority, and the other holding a, uh, a valued sword. <laughs> this is very strange. Sima Yi's son asked why his father hesitated. <laughs> and pointed out that since the city looked empty, why didn't they attack? Sima considered what he knew. Noted philosopher and tactician and most accomplished strategist of his time, freaking Zhu Liang, known to be cautious and risk averse, was acting casually at a time where it was seemingly inappropriate. This was very, very wrong. And Sima Yi knew that it probably meant an ambush. So Sima decided that the empty fort was probably a trap. <laughs> Surely Zhuge was staging an ambush within. So Sima Yi and his 150,000 troops withdrew. And with little but a loot and a smile, Zhuge deflected the siege upon Qi Chang. The idea behind the empty fort strategy is that if you candidly and overtly display your own weaknesses, it can make your enemy suspicious because that's, that's an unnatural thing to do. Instinctually, we hide our vulnerabilities. So by doing the opposite, maybe you can deflect a direct attack. Now, there is some question if the events happened as they're written down. Maybe it's a little hard to tell because they were written down over a thousand years after they supposedly happened in a work that is touted to be fiction. So Zhuge Liang was definitely a brilliant war strategist and however you interpret the story, <laughs> his, his stories of cunning and wisdom are told again and again and continually reinterpreted for new audiences almost 2000 years after his death. Now, a word of caution, the empty fort strategy is best used sparingly as it re relies on the unexpected. So you can probably only pull it off once. And if number 32 doesn't work, proceed directly to strategy number 36. When all else fails, retreat. So I would like to raise a glass to the wise, cunning, and completely badass Zhuge Liang and to the idea of letting vulnerabilities be your strength. <laughs> 